It's Tuesday, November 1st, and these are the five underreported stories that you need to know. A new report from Breitbart found that the Biden administration's record of migrant deaths at the border is being, quote, grossly understated. CBS initially reported that at least 853 migrants died while crossing or shortly after crossing the southern border over the past 12 months. A source told Breitbart that these numbers don't include the known migrant deaths where remains weren't found. Incentivizing border crossing is not just a political tragedy. It is extremely dangerous and it puts people in harm's way. So with the whole Paul Pelosi story going on, people online were circulating that a third person was at the Pelosi's home at the time of the tragic events last week. And then Politico's deputy managing editor said that claims like this are, quote, baseless, even though the claims were based on Politico's own reporting. And speaking of Paul Pelosi's attacker, apparently the suspect accused of beating Paul Pelosi is actually in the U.S. illegally. He's reportedly overstayed his visa. Next, The Intercept did an incredible report detailing how the U.S. government is working hand-in-hand with big tech. We all remember that disinformation board that the U.S. government was trying to start, right? With, like, the singing Mary Poppins chick? Well, it turns out that even though the disinformation board was shut down, the underlying work of it is still going on just in different parts of the U.S. government. And finally, a new report from National Review found that Texas Democrat Henry Cuellar accepted donations from a family linked to a notorious drug cartel in Mexico. And now someone from that very family was recently arrested for funneling money from the drug cartels to American political campaigns. It's fine. I'm sure. I'm sure everything's fine.